Harry's wife. It drove her mental. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and this is a public propaganda bulletin on behalf of Harry's wife, Duchess of Overseas. The fine young cannibals once sang, She Drives Me Crazy. It would appear that Harry's wife is now saying, It drove me mental. How do we know this? Well, according to something called Celeb Magazine, with an article by Nick Ritchie, Harry's wife having mental health issues from paparazzi car chase in New York City. Q, you must all now issue a noise of sympathy. Ah. Maybe offer some tears for the Duchess of Industrial Beige as a consequence of the fact that she's having mental health issues arising from the paparazzi car chase in New York City. Let me tell you this. Her mental health issues caused the paparazzi car chase. Didn't arise from it, as you know. Her mental health issues, in fact, her personality disorder, arose years ago, created as a consequence of her having a genetic predisposition towards narcissism, something she inherited from both Ma and Pa, and the fact that she had a lack of control environment in her formative years. Bring those two things together and boom, the narcissist is created. Accordingly, to now claim that she is having mental health issues from the paparazzi car chase in New York City is nothing more than a pity play. Her narcissism sees the backlash that has come about as a consequence of the false allegations that she has made. And therefore, as part of trying to nullify that threat to control, which more of that in forthcoming videos today, this puff piece is issued in order to try and cause you to feel sympathetic for her. The poor lamb. She's experiencing some mental health issues from being in a taxi. Oh dear, how unfortunate. Perhaps it wasn't as clean as she had expected to be and the seat wasn't as padded as it ought to have been and there wasn't a bucket of champagne in the back. But let's dive into this article and find out more. In a disturbing incident that unfolded on the streets of Los Angeles... <coughs> what? Yes, I'll read that again. In a disturbing incident that unfolded on the streets of Los Angeles. Harry's wife. If you're going to organise some propaganda through another PR puff piece, I'd suggest that you utilise somebody who at least knows where your mental health causing paparazzi chase took place. It was New York. The fact that this article can't even get the city correct is demonstrative of the fact that you're probably now going to hear me read a load of pap. But let's plough on. In a disturbing incident that unfolded on the streets of Los Angeles, Prince Harry and Harry's wife, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, found themselves at the centre of a high-speed car chase with paparazzi. The incident reignited concerns surrounding the invasion of privacy and the safety of public figures. Did it? Where? The Duke and Duchess have been subjected to intense media scrutiny mm -hmm, since their highly publicised departure from the British royal family. Seeking refuge in the United States, they hope to escape the relentless paparazzi culture open brackets, that Harry's wife has created by repeatedly ringing them up close brackets, that plague their lives in the United Kingdom. However, it seems that their attempts to live a more private life have been challenged once again open brackets, by Harry's wife's insistence on the worldwide privacy tour, namely, wanting privacy, but doing everything but actually seek it. Close brackets. The car chase unfolded as Harry's wife and Harry were being pursued by multiple paparazzi vehicles, driving recklessly and dangerously in an attempt to capture images of the couple. The situation quickly escalated, with the Sussex's security team manoeuvring to avoid the aggressive pursuit. Witnesses describe the scene as chaotic and alarming. Who's that? Harry's wife? With concerned onlookers, Harry's wife, fearing for the safety of the royal couple. 
This incident sheds light on the ongoing battle between public figures and the paparazzi. Is there one? Highlighting the need for stricter regulations to protect individuals' privacy and safety, says Harry's wife. While the media plays a vital role in reporting news and informing the public, there must be a balance between the public's right to information and the privacy rights of individuals, especially those in the public eye. What about those in the public eye that deliberately put themselves in the public eye? Don't they waive their rights? Prince Harry and Harry's wife have been vocal, oh we know that, about their struggles with intrusive media coverage, all generated by Harry's wife, and the toll it has taken on their mental health. The car chase serves as a stark reminder of the relentless pursuit faced by celebrities and public figures, leaving them feeling vulnerable and exposed. Actually, most celebrities and public figures recognise it goes with the territory and realise if you stop and allow them to take a few photographs of you, they'll largely leave you alone. It's when you start playing games with them that the paparazzi bites back. The incident has sparked widespread outrage. Has it? Well, I suppose it has sparked widespread outrage in terms of people saying, what a load of old tosh, and it was all manufactured by her, and calls for action. Advocates argue that paparazzi behaviour should be closely monitored and restricted to ensure the safety and well-being of those targeted. Some propose stricter legislation that imposes penalties on paparazzi who engage in reckless behaviour or invade the privacy of individuals. While the media industry faces the challenge of providing engaging content to meet the public's demand, it is crucial to respect the boundaries of personal privacy. Celebrities and public figures like Harry's wife and Harry deserve the right to live their lives without constant intrusion. The incident also highlights the need for improvised security measures for high-profile individuals. The safety of public figures should not be compromised by the aggressive tactics of the paparazzi. Collaborative efforts between law enforcement agencies, private security firms and media organisations are necessary to ensure the protection of public figures and maintain a responsible media environment. In the aftermath of the car chase, Harry's wife and Harry released a statement expressing their concerns and calling for greater accountability. They emphasised the need for systemic changes to protect not only themselves, but also others who face similar challenges. As society <laughs> grapples with the implications of this incident, it is crucial to foster a culture that respects personal boundaries, privacy and the well-being of individuals, particularly those thrust into the spotlight. The paparazzi's relentless pursuit, yes, you keep saying it was relentless, it wasn't, should not come at the cost of safety and mental health. Ultimately, the car chase involving Harry's wife and Harry serves as a powerful reminder that the invasive nature of paparazzi culture remains a significant concern. It renews the call for comprehensive measures to protect the privacy, security and dignity of public figures and underscores the importance of responsible media practices in a world that increasingly values individual rights and well-being. Well, this article, clearly written by Harry's wife, claims that their mental health has been affected but doesn't actually tell us how, repeats again and again and again that the paparazzi needs to be regulated and needs to be more accountable and it needs systemic changes and they engage in a relentless pursuit and of course tells us that the chase took place on the mean streets of Los Angeles. This is a propaganda puff piece. It is laughable in its transparency, in its attempt to bolster Harry's wife's reputation in light of all of the allegations that it really was just a made-up, fabricated incident, and in its attempt to try and slap the bottom of the paparazzi. This will have been occasioned by Harry's wife. It wouldn't surprise me if she wrote it. The manner in which it's written, repetitive, dull, not incisive, it smacks of her, doesn't it? It has the stench of the beige one. Yet again, Harry's wife, in attempting to nullify the threats to control posed by the backlash arising from the car chase reaction, sticks her cloven hoof in it once again and demonstrates that she's just bringing attention to the matter again and again. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you listening.